All right, guys, uh, welcome into the next episode of the Sweat Session Review. Um, just as always, as I want to plug these uh, before I jump into the Sweat Session and all that jazz. So as of right now, the third and fourth week, guys, will be free for anybody that's interested in getting a Sweat Session Review done. All right. Um, there will be a Discord link in the description below. If you do join that, just contact me directly if you are interested in getting a Sweat Session Review done, guys. This is free. We'll do any sweat, 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 I will review anyone's game, lads. I don't really care what stake. I did a 2 and L1 last week. I'm doing a 25 and L1 this week, and maybe three weeks before that, I did a 50 and L1. So, there's always, I'm always open to doing any stake, lads. It doesn't make a difference to me because I just want to point out things people are doing wrong, and it's for free, guys. So, as I said already, if you are interested, then get in the Discord link below, guys. I also have a Private rakeback servers uh, Discord as well, guys. Check that out as well if you are interested in getting extra rakeback on top of what you're getting on some of the sites right now. So there will be two Discord links, one for my community and then a second one for private rakeback. Um, so yeah, if you want, guys, do check them out, okay? Do check them out. So yeah, as I said, next week three and week four will be free, lads. So if you are interested in getting it done, please contact me through Discord, okay? So let me just move over here. All right, so today we have Don't, or DGen Gambler, I'm going to say it, something like that, mate. Uh, we've been talking back and forth a little bit. Um, so yeah, he's kind of struggling to break into 50 NL at the moment. And yeah, just basically wanted to get his re game reviewed. Simple as that, guys. Guys take a, took some shots at 50 NL, didn't work out. And yeah, says he has good results on 25. So... Yeah, look, as I said, we'll just jump into this mate and we'll see what happens. So best of luck, Majee. Yeah, I was gonna say just 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 gonna be folding that even against the six big line one mate. Again, it's just against an eight V pip. I'm not sure how accurate this is. I've said this before. I've said this before on um on stream that uh just again it's going to be close but like again, how accurate this smart hood is i'm not 100 percent sure mate but i i would just pure fall that ace nine and not worry too much about it yeah even though it's probably a recreational but it's very very tight wreck i think these fives man might actually be called in this situation my only problem is right is that this guy's squeezing into a guy who has 56 big blinds effective so I kind of think, like, they're not going to be too wide here. So, worst case scenario, you're talking, like, I don't know, like, 9-10 suited, jack-10 suited, I would guess. You know, he's just going to have a relatively strong range here on average, uh, I would say. So, I'm probably just pure folding these fives, bro. Although, it's probably going to be a call in theory in this situation. But I like the fold. I like the fold. If, I, if that was on my games now, I'd probably peel the fives there in position. Um, but I really don't mind just falling on these games, mate, because I just don't think people are going to be squeezing wide enough in them formations, and in that in that exact situation, I should say. But I, I like the fold. Just checking the is ten pure just to check fold, bro. Not going to be putting any more money in the middle, especially when it's fucking five way to the flop, like madness. But yeah, you're going to have that. Again, just checking. Again, just checking, bro. I don't see any incentive to do anything else. Now, in terms of the river play here, we could probably discuss something. Yeah, I'm just going to fall now, though. I think, like, I'd still be checking here pretty high frequency, bro. Like, if I still had over pairs here, or, you know, eights, whatever, eights plus, or, like, you know, some six five suited, I would always be checking this turn again. Just in terms of, like, you know, when we actually have some value here. Um, it's just going to be very difficult to get two streets of value with over pairs here. Especially the fact that it was five ways to the flop as well. So, I'm just kind of talking about the value range that I have there, or at least the short on value hands. But definitely check call one anyways and see what happens on the river. But against a half pot, they're probably not going to be folding versus much, if any, sizes against that player on the river. Probably for pot size, it might be a little bit closer, but anything below that, definitely going to be calling.
you need to get your Rogan bro for table tiling. Or just use the software, the in-game software. Three betting here on a low roll, I think. I mean, I'm not sure if this is half the time for me or 25%, but either way, mix and call and fold with the 7-6 suited. And this is probably an example, mate, that maybe you're missing these. I mean, you could be doing RNG here. I see the RNG down the bottom left corner, so I never looked at that specifically, but yeah. This is fine, three bet sizing. Against an 88 V pit, mate, you can nearly actually go bigger here because I don't expect this guy to ever fold. And obviously how Ace King is playing against his min raise open range, like whatever it is, it's going to be a lot of random shit, basically. I might make this 10 big blinds exploitatively because fish do not like to fold to three bets. Especially when they're out of position. And I don't mind the polar size in here. Exploitatively, I, pick a, I usually pick a smaller size in based on population tendencies. I think half pot here works well as well. But yeah, as I said, um, going for pot size there, mate, is going to be absolutely fine. Um, I would not be folding here because we have the ace of spades and two overs. So definitely wouldn't be folding here just yet. We'll definitely be peeling one in position. Yeah, definitely calling one. And if he checks here, bro, we're just going to bet small and jam river is what we're going to do. If he starts betting big here again, we're just going to fold, honestly. Like, if he bets 30 big blinds here, we're just going to fold. Yeah, like we can't really fold versus 20. Can't really fold versus 20. You know, if he ever does check the river, we can just jam all in. I don't like jamming here because this profile, bro, they're going to have a lot of air that I'd rather just call and realize my equity in position. It's not that they're going to have a lot of air here. They're going to have, like, top pair that they're never going to fold versus a jam in general. So fish do not like to bet fold in this situation is the problem. So when that is the case, this semi-bluff isn't really performing that well when you're not going to get that many folds uh, most of the time against this profile. At least that's my perception. So I would rather just call in position here and realize equity than jam this. I'm not really a fan of this, bro. I'm not really a fan of this, but it could be okay. But I'd rather just call um, because I know the tendency fish don't really like to bet fold too often in this situation. So yeah, look, again, I'd rather do this if I was out of position, but in position, I think you can just like call here and realize equity, see what happens on the river because they're going to overfall in the bet bet check line in this situation or the donk donk check line. But yeah, I, again, I don't really mind it, but I personally just end up calling here in position to realize equity because if they ever check the river, bro, they might, um, they might, they will overfold as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a crazy, crazy fold by him. Yeah, as I said, mate, I'd rather just call Realize Equity on the river. And, you know, if whatever happens, happens. It's just, I know that that profile doesn't like to bet fold that often. And the thing is, just because he folded the Queen of Spades here, doesn't really make it the best play on average. Because, you know, when they dunk, flop and dunk turn, mate, they are going to they are gonna overfold when they check. So, as I said, when, when that node happens, mate, where they dunk and they dunk and whatever... They will have some air, don't get me wrong. They will always have air in that line, but like it's more so about how often they like to bet fold and they really don't like to, bro. Especially a high V-pit fish like that. I'm actually surprised he folded that. But yeah, like I would just call in position there, mate. Regardless of what the river is, I know I came to Jack of Spades, but I'd still rather call being in position there, bro. Like you don't need to like bluff fish for big sizings, like. Um... So, like, you're just better off just jamming value there, mate, and then just calling the parts you arranged and want to realize equi equity in position. Like, you don't want to, like, bluff fish for big sizes for all ins and, like, 2x pot and 150 on the river and stuff like that because, you know, a lot of the times they're folding frequencies, especially in, like, a call-call fold line, for example. Like, they're, they're very inelastic. Uh, with sizing schemes, so there's absolutely no point sizing up big with your bluffs and then, you know, whatever the case may be because they're going to call pretty much the same. Um, so I, I would just fast play value there. Like if I had ace queen with no spade, I'd probably just jam that on the turn to, 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 to just deny some equity, whatever the case may be. Probably do the same thing with king queen, for example, or I might even raise that on the flop. Um, the, the point I'm trying to make is, bro, you just don't need to semi-bluff that often against fish profiles, especially when you're in position. Because mostly they just don't like to bet fall, bro. As far as I remember here, and anyways.
So yeah, again, it's a pretty nuanced spot in fairness, mate. Like, you know, how often that donk donk line comes out like that in a three bet pot, you know, it's pretty pretty infrequent. But again, just from my perspective on population tendencies and how fish are playing when they donk in general, they don't really like to kind of donk fold much, if ever. So yeah, you need to take that into account there. We'll just call and just 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 realize equity by the river, mate, because if you have your checks, we can just bluff. We can just bluff for a small sizing because again they're going to be probably relatively inelastic to size in there. Or like probably even a block bet is performing relatively well. I'm not gonna lie in terms of naive MDF. What's the logic behind opening 2.3 in the hijack and then opening min on the button? I don't think that should be a thing, mate. Like, I'd rather you open min from all positions if you're opening min on the button. I know there was a recreational in that hand with the time he did open up for min. I, I, I would just keep it to min, mate, if you're doing that exploited because population is going to be overfallen drastically versus min here as well. I will forbet this as well. I will forward about this as well, especially when he makes it bigger. So like 9, 18, 27. I'll probably make this around 23, 24 big blinds. I wouldn't be folding that, mate. I'd go for a four bet, honestly. Um, population are going to be over folding versus four bets. And also over folding post flop as well. Uh, but like there's just certain combos, mate, that you have to four bet there. Like an ace queen is going to be one of them. Like, you know, there might be some marginal other hands like king 10 suited. There might be a mixed raise fold. I would fold them every time. But hands that are like a pretty high frequency four bet like that ace queen, I would always be four betting ace queen there, mate. Always. It's blockers to value, blockers to continue in range. You know, it's a good combo to do with, mate. And it's like, you, like, I understand you might have this perception of like, oh yeah, people are under three betting and, and, and stuff like that. Some players probably are, man. But they're over folding versus four bets as well. You know, so... You, you should be more aggressive with four bets on these games as well. The only downside is, I'm not sure how this deviates simply because, um, yeah, you're probably asking about that question, mate. I, I, I would four bet, I would four bet there without any hesitation and just like, you know. Again, it's 102 hands. I get it's 14, 12, but it's 16% three bet. It means fuck all, bro, to be totally honest with you. But like, I wouldn't stray too much away from like having static ranges when it comes to four betting. The only ones I wouldn't four bet are the ones that are like, you know, mix, fold, raise. So, for example, like ace, 10 offsuit, I think under the gun versus uh, hijack, for example, might be a low frequency or half the time for me. I would just fold that in these games. King, 10 suited is another one, I think, under the gun versus button. Um, I would just pure fold that and wouldn't worry about mixing four bets on a, on a low roll. I'm talking more about the ones that are call and fall or sorry call and four bets i would be very aggressive with four bets uh with them combos um and mostly because people are still over folding quite a bit uh versus four bets against all positions so you should be a little bit more aggressive with with with, with four bets in my opinion especially on these games man like again you're paying rake you're paying rake post or pre-flop so i'm not sure how That'll deviate some of the ranges itself. But you still want to be four betting pretty aggressively, mate. You want, like I will always tell people that like I would rather have the aggre the the initiative in the hand in terms of aggression. I would always rather be the aggressor than the caller. Because it's way more difficult to realise equity when you're the caller versus when you're the when, when you're the aggressor. If that makes sense. But yeah, definitely want to be four betting that. And like, this is probably an example of in a situation where this might be a low frequency four bet. In, the, in this squeeze situation, I would just pure fold this. It might not even be a, a, a low frequency, but um, you get my point. This, is, this, would be, this would be the deviations I would make with certain combos. Yeah, I would never flat this. I would never, ever flat this. This hand just plays very poorly in this situation because you're going to invite the big blind in here bro like i would honestly rather you four bet this than ever call this i think this is a bad call 
Okay, I think this is a bad call. Like, I'd rather you flat, like, suit the combos of Ace Jack here, no problem. But the offsuit ones, like, this is never, this is never a flat on my ranges. Like, this is like, I think this is a four bet half the time on my ranges, button versus, or sorry, cutoff versus small blind. It's never flatted. And like, if it's, if it's never flatted in that dynamic, mate, on my ranges for 500 nil, it's never going to be flatted here when, the, when there's a core caller on the button. Never. So definitely just want to be folding this pure, bro. M maybe mixing some four bets every now and again. Well, this is the problem. Now you're going three away with a marginal hand. This, this, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't happen. In my opinion, anyways. As I said, you, do, you want to be the aggressor most of the time. And now you're in a spot here, mate, where you have middle pair and a backdoor flush draw. You can't fold versus half pot. But you also still have to worry about the buttons range. You know? Like, if this guy jams here, you're, it's just a very, very frustrating spot. But, like, you have to understand here as well that this guy leading half pot here into two players, this is fucking super strong, man, in my opinion. Like, very equity-driven value and just just a lot of like i don't know it's over periods in particular just like high equity hands in general yeah and like you just have to fold here now yeah like just fold that pre bro just fold that pre um and you avoid putting another 25 to 30 big blinds in the middle having to fold like again just like never call that off off suit ace jack off suit like the ace the king 10 here yeah, King-10 is too wide here, mate, as well. King-10 is way too wide for squeezing. Like, King-10 suited, no problem. Queen-Jack suited, I don't mind call or squeeze. In terms of, like... I don't even squeeze King-Jack here, mate. I don't even think I squeeze King-Queen here. To be totally honest with you. King-Queen would probably be the bottom of it. But that would be it. But this is way too wide with the King-10, King mate. Even though the guy in the hijack is a wreck. I would not be squeezing that there, bro. It's too much. It's too much. And as I discussed already with this ace jack, I'm, I'm, I'm already out of there. Pre-flop. And the thing is as well, lads, I did a video last week about pre-flop from, from a 2-1-L player. You're still seeing people make mistakes. Um, on, on 25 and l you know what I mean? In terms of pre-flop decision making. I would rather just 3-bet 9s here, mate. I know there's a broken stack in the big blind, but I'd rather just play a three better fold on these games. And again, like that, to just to be the aggressor. It's so much easier to navigate post-flop when you are the aggressor. Period. And like him see betting three quarters on this board already, mate. I nearly want to fucking fold nines. I genuinely nearly want to fold nines here already. And like, it's not about like, you know, oh, well... You can't be folding an overpair here, man. Like, what backdoors do you have here when he's betting on this board? Like, he should be checking range on this board. When I see people bet big on boards they're supposed to check high frequency, I give them a lot of credit in terms of strong hands. I don't mind you calling for one, bro. But understand... This is a very, very strong bet by him here. I would, I would honestly just block bet this turn to always check back river. Is what I would do here exploitatively. Because they're never going to raise on this turn. And if they ever have an overpair, they will just check call here and you can get to check back river. So I really don't mind just betting like two or three big blinds here exploitatively. Because I know they're never going to check raise ever. On this node in particular and on this board. Um, so I'd rather do that here exploitatively if I am going to do that instead of checking back and, and, you know, potentially open myself up to be bluff catching in a spot where it's going to be very, very close, mate. I like the overbet here with the king too. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this, man. I'm really not a fan of this. Like, you will get folds here, I get that. Like, that is not something you should do on the turn. Like, this is all coming from pre-flop, mate. Three-betted pre-flop, but if you call... Like, call and flop is fine, obviously, but man, betting two one and a half x pot here with his hand on the turn is, is, is bad. It's straight up bad. It's just unnecessary. Like, what hands do you want to go for an overbet there with, like, outside of 7x? 
Like, what bluffs do you have? You're basically like, the, this hand just should never be bluffed, turned into a bluff here. And now you're going to, you know, you get there with a set and you just check back, you're just going to have to check back the river here because you don't know if you're good. Like, the guy called a one and a half X pot, he snap called a one and a half X pot raise here. Uh, a pot bet on the turn, bro. Like, I don't even think he can value bet this river, man. Like, this hand is just fucked up from the turn play, to be totally honest with you, man. Just check back the turn, or bet small on the turn to check back river. Like, how you ended up on the river here in this line with 51 big blinds just should never happen, bro. This is a pretty big mistake, in my, in my opinion. Very, very unnecessary. I don't even know what I value bet this river after he check calls the turn for overbet. I'm being totally honest. He probably has to say it. Yeah, like, like this, this man should never happen. This should never happen, bro. This should just go three bet pre-flop, end of the hand. He's not going to call ace two. And even if he does, you're going to check back the flop. You're going to check back the turn. If he bets three quarters on the turn, it's already kind of close. But if he checks the turn, you're going to check back again. But man, just three bet this pre-flop and you avoid this whole situation. But do not pick the size you picked on the turn, bro. I was already thinking this hand is indifferent when this guy bets the flop for the size he did. Seriously, I might have already started folding flop in this situation, given the size he used. And on a board, he's meant to be checking range. You know? But yeah, like, you deserve that what the fuck emoji because you really shouldn't end up with nines in this spot, man. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. With all due respect. Just three better pre-flop, mate. Um, and go from there. Ace nine would open as well in the high or in the cutoff. But yeah, very, very unnecessary, bro. Very, very unnecessary. Like cost yourself basically. I, as I said, I don't even think you can value about that river there. Or, like after he check calls the turn. Like my intuition was telling me that immediately. I I I, I honestly would just play a three better four strategy, mate, for your own simplification. Because it is going to be a lot easier to. To navigate post flop a lot of the time. Like you're gonna get false pre flop, you're gonna get calls, but you're gonna be able to navigate better as the aggressor than with as the caller, if you get what I mean. So again, like that, this is a relatively high frequency checking board. I think I would just check range here. Mix check call, check raise here, but I probably would. So this is probably not free. It's not that you couldn't see about this board, mate. It's just like the imposition player here has way more nuts than you here. Like, way more nuts. Like, he has fours, fives, eights, six, seven suited. And stuff like that, where you just don't have it. Like, you're going to have six, seven suited here, low frequency. I don't have fours or fives. I don't even three about four or five suited here. So, pocket eights and low frequency six, seven is the only hands that I have on this board. You're just going to have to start checking these way more often, mate. Betting these is not a mistake. Don't get me wrong. But I think default to check and range on these, it will help you going forward. Because it's not like you're making a drastic deviation because you're not going to be seeing it that often on these boards in particular. But I don't mind it. Personally, I would rather go for a check raise there because pe when people stab, they're overfolding quite a bit for, for uh, versus check raises. And this would be a good hand to check raise here, obviously, especially on a board where you're going to be, have to be checking high frequency, bro. All right. So I don't mind it either way. Betting with that hand is absolutely fine. Definitely not a mistake in any way, shape, or form. But, um, Again, just from a range perspective and how it interacts, there's going to be a lot more connectivity for the in-position player there than for yourself. Of course, you still have over pairs and all that stuff. They want to check raise as well. But just in terms of nutted, nutted hands, he's going to have a lot more of them on that board. Uh, 6-5, again, going to be low frequency 3 bet. Again, Duncan on this board is very, 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 very common, especially in these formations. But I wouldn't worry about that strategy right now, miss. I am for sure leading small on this turn. I don't really like going for pop bets here with this hand because, man, like, I think you have an issue of not realizing when you have showdown value and when you're ahead of some of his range. Because 6x here has showdown value against ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, 10, king, queen, king, jack. That, that checks back this board every single time. So, like, instead of you picking 6-5 here, 
just you're gonna have like king five of diamonds you're gonna have ace five offsuits you're gonna have a bunch of five x here mate without the six five like if you had six five of spades i don't mind doing this but man just go for a block bet here on the turn so you're supposed to split sizings here in terms of block bet and then gonna gonna have some polarization bets as well um half pot with this hand would probably be better I, 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 and i wouldn't mind that at all but like you do not need to overbet this hand uh, because it's still ahead of a good good amount of the imposition player's checkback range, and they're going to cap their range way more in practice than in equilibrium in terms of a balanced checkback range from the imposition player here. So it's really, really unnecessary to go for the size of it with this hand, in my opinion. Um, just, just, just pick fucking five x like any random like jack five suited here, you know, which you're going to probably defend sometimes pre flop against two point two. Um, so stuff like that, bro, like, you're gonna do this with 8, 9, 10, 8, all spade draws, you really don't need to do this with 6, 5, bro. You really, really don't. So we're, 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 we've noticed two, two things already about, like, you know, polarization errors, in, in my opinion. Like, re really, really kind of unnecessary. Like, I, like the 6-5, man, as I said, I'd rather do it with 6-5 of spades. But, like, you're going back to that pocket nines hand as well in terms of pulse flop and going one and a half x pot with nines. Like, that's a huge polarization error, mate, and that's a big EV mistake. Big EV mistake, bro. Three button here seems good. Do get called. So just gonna start with a range bet here on this board. Yeah, seems good. Do we get called? Um I would like to see the V pip and the total amount of hands this guy has played. I honestly don't mind exploitively double barreling this. Um because population will overcall and overfold the turn. But I don't really mind either or here. This would be, be this would be a better hand to barrel. Um if it flush didn't complete here because you're unblocking the flop floats with clubs, which would make it a lot better of a double barrel in general. But on a flush completing turn, it's kind of like meh. I think I would check this back in Bluff River. But I really don't mind this either way, bro. I really, really don't mind doing this exploitatively because people will overcall and overfold on the turn. And if he has some pocket sixes through pocket jacks here without a diamond, he has to fold the turn. Uh, so I don't mind this either way, bro. I don't mind this either way. And I like, I, I think it's going to be a better play against population just to barrel that exploitatively. Um, the thing is, if you get called in that turn, mate, their range is going to be a lot more condensed than what it looks like in, equ in equilibrium. So I wouldn't overdo it with bluffing because you kind of already attacked the overfold by double barreling here relatively aggressively. Um, so yeah, well played with the ace queen. As I said, I don't mind checking that back to Bluff River if they check again. I think both are fine because you will check back a lot of like King X there, maybe King X with a diamond, like King Queen offsuit. I think King Jack offsuit is three bet there as well. So you might have them combos that want that will want to check back the turn to you know always call river. Um, but look, as I said, man, I really don't mind that double barrel with ace queen at all exploitatively. It's something I would do myself. Very, very much so. Uh, probably just check falling with this A7 here on the turn. Yeah, like... I... If this is against a fish, given that it's a broken stack, mate, I would honestly just go small on the turn here and probably go three quarters to an overbet on the river. Always against his profile. Um, but if this guy is kind of like, whatever, not the biggest fish, but he's a broken stack, mate, I don't mind this. But I can't, again, I would rather just pick smaller sizes against recreationals. Because, like, you know, just, again, a lot of times they're inelastic. And not in every node, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I would rather just keep their range wider by betting small here. And then always bluff and river because their range pre-flop when they open or when they limp is just going to be super, super wide. That, like, you're just, you are just can just bet all these hands on the turn and on the river and it's just going to be making money. So I don't mind betting the turn there, mate, but I'd rather pick a smaller size and, like, half pot and then 70% in the river or 25 there on the turn, and then whatever, like over best or, or, or three quarters will work pretty well in practice again. I uh, would open that queen too as well. Uh, 
Uh, six is here with a heart. Definitely want to be betting this flop and probably blasting off quite a bit, I would say. So we'll see what happens here. Again, like that, I don't mind picking this size and bro. This hand, this hand category will work well with the six of hearts. Uh, the, the thing is, I, we, we both clearly understand that this board requires polarization. I am honestly building my range around B25, lads, on, on, on all flops. Because the future street exploits are way more applicable. Um, you know, if you bet big here on the flop, people I think are actually overcalling slightly. And they're not really overfalling future streets. So, you know, I'm not going to say you could just do this a lot of the time with high equity draws. But, like, that's what polarization is on this board anyways. You're going to do it with, like, another, a lot of, like, high equity. Just, just, you know, high equity draws in general. Like, or high equity hands, I should say, in general. And then you're going to have some, like, maybe air hands. Uh, like, you know, I don't know, like... 10, 8, like, 10, like 8, 9, or 7, 8 suited, I'd be turning into a bluff here on this board. Um, as, as kind of find the, you know, bluff to bluff air, or sorry, the air and, and kind of value parity range is what you're going to do there. And then the high equity draws. So like, look, man, the point of trying to get across here, I hope, I, I probably didn't explain myself very well there, but I would rather just keep it small here. And the thing is, if you node lock this to only have a 25% size and you just end up seabetting range on this board anyways because it's so good for your opening range from under the gun, you know. So, preferably big is going to be used here like he did. But, um, I, I always found turns and rivers are going to get dicey here. The thing is, you have to stay blasting off at sixes though. You have to stay blasting off at sixes. So, I, li I like the way you played that. I defo, defo do. I li like, the thing is, mate, as long as you're like... Constructing your flop range well enough that you understand how aggressive that you still need to be on turns and rivers. So I like the double barrel here. As I said, if I'm betting sixes on the flop there, even if I bet small, I am probably going for an overbet on the turn myself. Or requiring polarization like you did. Uh nine five, you can go either way here, mate. I do not mind block betting. I don't I, I don't mind check calling twice. But if I check this on the turn, mate, I'm never check folding. Never check folding. I doubt. It's going to be a pretty clear check call, check call in these formations. Uh, especially for any size and below 75 or 80 percent, I would guess. But definitely not folding here. And yeah, we, we have a pretty clear call on the river here, bro. We have a pretty clear check call here on the river. If you go, unless he goes like 120, 150. And, it, and, and this is the thing, man. They won't bluff enough on the river. Like he just like he just bets king queen on the turn. I don't mind the stab, but I would rather bluff. There again, you're gonna have way better hands here. Like king queen still has a slither of showdown value here. It's still ahead of like king jack. I don't know some like. Yeah, it's probably not got the most showdown value. I don't mind stabbing the turn like he did. Like he did. Uh, but as I said, if he barrels the river, mate, I'm never folding for anything below eighty percent in that situation. Pot size be a little bit closer. But I think 75, 75 there is going to be pretty over bluffed on average. Again, 10-8, I'm opening there, mate. So mi missing a few opens on the button, bro. Pretty sure if I did a database review, I I'd see a lower frequency than optimal on the race first in ranges. From the button in particular. But like the thing is, mate, you should nearly be expanding what you should be opening on the button on these games. Because I've no doubt people are going to be under tree betting here, like, drastically, and also, like, like overfolding. You're just going to be overfolding and under tree betting, mate, and, like, any sort of marginal hand, I don't know, like, uh, King 8 offsuit would be a pure open for me, 10 8 offsuit, Jack 8 offsuit, I'm being opened on the button, 7 8 offsuit, I think, is another one that might be a little bit closer, or maybe that's from the small blind. But, like, anything that's mixed in theory, bro, I would just be pure opening on these games and probably a little bit wider if there's recreations in the blind because, again, they're going to definitely under three but You know, so you're, you get to realize your equity with them hands. The EV goes up based on the pre-flop tendency from, from, that, from population as a whole. Um, on these games in particular, that they're going to be under three betting and also over folding. So definitely the zero EV hands in theory, mate, are going to start making money based on that pre-flop tendency. So definitely a simple exploit there to implement as well. So 10 here are coming along as well. Seems good. Seems standard. Uh, 
Let's see what you do here because I'm folding this 10 8 straight away. Yeah, like, I would just fold. I would just fold here. And again, just the equity of this hand in this situation, mate, I really think it's not performing well. Um, and I just think in terms of equity, like, you have so many better hands that you want to just check rates here. Like, I'd rather do 10 of spades here, obviously, than 10 of clubs. Um, I think, like, if you do this and get called, you're in very, very dicey spots on the turn, mate. Ah, I don't mind it because you have a 7x advantage here, and you do technically block 7, 8 of clubs, which is very, very relevant. You do block some combos of jack-10, having the 10 of clubs, jack-10 suited, obviously. But I always think when people see that on these boards, mate, like, they're not going to be too wide, or they're not going to be as wide as it would be, we'll say, big blind versus hijack in a heads-up spot, you know? But I'd rather do this with 10 of spades than 10-8 of clubs, personally. Because now, like, this is what I'm saying, man, like, you just don't really have that many good turn cards. You know, if it comes to nine of hearts here, like, you don't even know if that's clean, mate. So I'd rather just fold this on the flop. And again, this is a spot where you just, from my opinion, bro, you just shouldn't be in the hand. It's like pre-flop, pre-flop, I'm obviously calling, but, like, I'm just folding on the flop, mate, with this hand. And really not worrying too much about it. Yeah, again, I, like this is again just over investing, bro. For sure, over investing. Yeah, yeah, you're just like in a bad, bad situation here, bro. In my opinion, especially how quick he called the turn. Like he could have some, like I don't know, king, king, queen of hearts or king ten of hearts that he might have ended up over calling the turn. But man, like again, this is like forty four big blinds in the river here, and for me, I should, I would never be in this spot. Like, this line will not be overfolded either, by the way. Like, it, it, there's not an overfold in this check raise bet line, especially when the, when, when the, when the, when the flop dynamic was multi-way. Like, if this works, mate, I'd be very, very surprised. Very, very, very surprised. Yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, I would just fold it on the flop, mate, honestly. Just fold it on the flop. It's just more so about what people are see betting usually in multi-way spots, mate. It's just not going to be as weak as it would be if it was heads up, man. That's just the way it is. So, like, this is actually a good example to learn from because how people are constructing their see betting range. And it's not like it's going out of line in terms of see betting. Like, they need to be fairly selective. Like, I'm just checking range there with the 7 6 of clubs. And the reason why I'm checking range is because I get information from the in-position player and I'm probably going to get information by the out-of-position player on the turn as well if it does check through. And even if it doesn't check through, say the in-position player stabs and now the big blind raises, if I have over pairs there, I might just start folding already. You know, so like, yeah, when, when people do see that here, mate, I do think... They are a lot stronger than average. So, like, your check raise here into that kind of C-betting range. Like, worst case scenario, this is like some 8, 9 of hearts, 9, 10 of hearts, or, or whatever the case may be. And as I said, your outs are not clean on the 9 of hearts, mate. So, I don't mind the check raise on the flop, so to speak. But I am giving up on the turn, bro. I am always, always giving up on the turn. And just check folded. I like to fold with the king five as well. I like to fold with the king five. The I thought that might be an example of potentially overcalling, but yeah, like de definitely just folding that, bro. Not um not over investing there with no backdoors facing a pot size bet, given it was what four way to the flop. So yeah, man, there's a lot of things, a lot of uh good good examples here of 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 stuff to improve your game or to work on at least. You know, don't get me wrong, I saw some positives as well. There's 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 no doubt about that. Did this go ISO pre? Yeah, okay, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. So we get min raised here. This is gonna be a very, very over bluff line by recreational, so I'm probably gonna end up calling this down with, with, with King Jack. Not gonna lie. Call me crazy, but yeah, I am I, I am never gonna fold on, on, on the river here, mate, in this situation. 
So this is a line where recreations are going to like drastically over bluff. They will have ace x here. They will have pocket nines and stuff like that. Whatever ace nine, but it's just such an over bluff line because the range that this guy has pre flop and how they construct their stat like stabbing like raise and bet bet range is just like it's never thin enough for value and way too much kind of air on the river like you will run into some strong hands when they do go all in here but like the percent well, yeah just not fall in here mate like you can't fold that like this is a prime example of not knowing how to deviate based on mda of this profile this is a huge mistake folding this on the turn and people are like oh well he's raising on this high board whatever you can't be good with the king jack if you called down this hand and you were wrong mate i would still say that that's the best play Based on how, how they're playing that note. It's disgusting. Like the guy has 80% V-pit, mate. His range is going to be extremely, extremely wide. But when they raise small like that and bet turn and river, your second and third pair are making a bunch of money, mate. That's how extreme it is. Like you could argue with an ASI board, it might lead to less bluffs on average by the river, but against the profile in that node, mate, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So that's going to be a fucking very, very helpful tip for you going forward. And like, this is the thing, lads. Like, nodes like this will come up and like, if it's against X or Y, like, I can only, I can only kind of commentate or mention what happens in the example and how you deviate versus one profile and the other. But like, you know, that, that node hasn't come up before that often in previous sweat sessions. And, like, it's so fucking profitable, lads. That line, the raise bet bet line. It's disgusting versus that profile. And, again, like that, the higher the V-pip, the more, the more, um, what is it? The more likely it's going to be more of an overbluff, basically. Um, so, yeah, it's like, you just cannot be folding like any second or third pair on any run out there unless it kind of runs forth with straight but even then even then it's still profitable i think <laughs> it's just they have way too much like air on the river and they don't jam thin enough for value so what they do end up jamming will be value sometimes but i guarantee you it won't be thin it won't be thin value shoves like we, we we've saw examples before of fish checking back two pair and you know top pair good kicker top pair top kicker you know, it, 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 that, this is like when you see that example, that's exactly why they end up over bluffing because they just sometimes don't go thin enough for value. So, again, like that, they just jam too much air. They just jam too much air or just arrive post flop with too much air that they just have to bluff. They just have to bluff. But again, like that, that's if, if there's going to be one highlight of the fucking video, lads, that's probably going to be that. And how you can use it to your advantage. You know, you just have to take my word for it. But trust me, I see the numbers. I run through this with my students when I when I, when we go through this class. Mostly the in position pre flop raiser and three bet pots and out of position as well. Like the numbers are just ridiculous, lads. In that line, again, like that, I would just be four betting this pre. This is way too much of an overfall, mate. So we saw ace queen off suit and king queen suit have been folded here. I would honestly just four bet both of them each time. Like, there's certain, the, the ones that are mixed call fold, mate, I think I would always fold them in these games. The hands that are probably mixed four bet call, I would probably always four bet in these games. Usually. The ones that are pure calls, pure four bets, then just play that strategy. Because I have no doubt they might be tri three betting tighter, mate, but they will overfold. They will overfold on these games. And you have to just understand that, like, it's you, you shifting the strategies that are already, you could argue even mix four bet folds are going to be profitable against guys on these games. But for you right now, mate, for example, ace jack offsuit, king queen offsuit, king jack offsuit, I would always be four betting out of position. Out of position anyways. Um, depends what positions we're talking about as the in-position player with them hands because they will be four bets as well. We'll say under the gun versus small blind, hijack versus big blind and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, in general, man, you definitely want to be a very more aggressive with four bets there because there's two examples we missed out on, unfortunately. 
maybe it's down to risk aversion. Maybe it's just down to maybe not knowing kind of what 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 feels best. I suppose, or you know, becoming biased that like oh we know they, they or just thinking that they under they they under three bets and they just never they always call the four bets. So I'm not gonna bother doing it, man. Like ace queen offsuit and king queen offsuit. Or sorry, ace queen offsuit and king queen suited. Play well as a four bet for the reasons I mentioned. You block value and you block the continuing range as well. You know, so it's 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 a no brainer, man. So definitely knowing that you're folding king queen suited. We're definitely under four bet and made an over folding versus three bets for sure, without a doubt. So that's definitely a pre-flop leak. Um, oh sorry, yeah, we three bet. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, did we fold that? My apologies. Oh yeah, like I mean, the thing is, for as I said, it doesn't matter what stakes that I do for these sweat session reviews. Like it's just like humans, it, 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 everyone will always have leaks. And I'm, I'm not saying I have, I don't have leaks because I definitely fucking do without a hesitation. And, and, and everyone has to admit that uh, on an honest level that they do have leaks, lads. But like, you know, you, no matter what person's game I review, man, like, the, like, like I will have a different perspective to them based on X and Y and Z, whatever the case may be. But you know, like, I, as I said, 2 and L, I did a 2 and L review last week and, you know, he had a lot of pre-flop errors in terms of opening and, you know, uh, don't be a gambler or a DJ gambler. You, you, you have pre-flop mistakes as well. Like, um, not, not obviously as bad, but like, you know, you missed a couple of button opens, you missed, uh, a four bet, two, one or two four bet opportunities. You call the ace jack off suit, small blind squeeze versus button cold call when you were in the cutoff. You know, they, they they all they all end up being pretty drastic mistakes, bro. And you know, just killing killing your win rate because we all make mistakes. But the guys that are playing two hundred and five hundred and one k and shit like that, mate, they don't really make huge blunders. Of course, they're still making mistakes, but they never usually make that many blunders. And we and, and to be totally honest, which it's been a couple of blunders here, like the nines hand obviously stands out the most. Definitely the nine cent. But you know, as I said, mate, like if you if you minimize the amount of blunders, that that in itself will help your game, obviously. But you know, we're all human at the end of the day, and we're all here to learn and improve. So again, if anybody is watching this sweat session review, like it should be very very beneficial to a lot of people. I would hope. You know, people say, why don't, why don't I get more views and stuff like that? I really don't care, lads, what, what, about that. I, I do this because I enjoy doing it. And I don't ever expect to make money from YouTube by making this content. I'm just happy to do it because I just love the game so much. So, like, you know, somebody commented on the video last week. I don't know if I like this pot size bet, to be totally honest with you, mate. This is a board where I don't think you want to be too overly polar. But again, in practice, people are going to drastically overfold in this line. Uh, so it doesn't matter too much. I would just click half pot here, mate. I think 25 is going to work quite well here also because both sizes are going to be drastically overfolded. Um, I just think when you bet pot here, it's kind of very polarizing to like... I mean, the thin position player is never going to check back enough forex, if ever. I just think rivers get dicey to play, mate, if you get called here, you know. Would rather just kind of go more... Like I always say to my students, if you can get the job done... For a smaller bet or a smaller price, you should always aim for that. So, like, I wouldn't bet any bigger than B fifty here, mate, with this hand. Like, again, it's going to be pretty overfolded, bro. But um, as I said, man, if you if you can get the job done for a smaller price, then you should always do that. You should always fucking do it. Because B fifty and B thirty are performing extremely, extremely well in that delay C bet line, based on an overfold, by the way. I like to see that size as well with the ace queen. All right, we go for another five minutes or so, bro. We'll probably make the seven big blinds as well. I think for in position maze, for a lot of times, people open for two to two point two. You can just make it seven every single time. 
I wouldn't make it any bigger than 8, ever, pre-flop. And the only time I'd make it versus 8 maybe is against 2.5 sometimes. Although 7.5 would be absolutely fine there in terms of what GTO wizard ranges are mentioning, or they say. And I like the fold there with the ace-queen. So, if this guy is a crazy fish, or a fish in general, mate, I am just going to start with a small bet and check call turn and river against this guy. If it is a fish. Like, again, I need to see the smart hood stats and how to deviate. Because um, this is very important in this line. Okay? Because fish will overbluff this line in a raised bet best. And given that this guy min raised, I am assuming this guy is a fish. So I don't think I'm ever folding here, bro. I don't think I'm ever folding on any run out. Even on this, like, spade turn. It's just like, oh, it doesn't feel great. If he bets pot here, I might start folding. To be totally honest with you. Outside of any other size, then, never folding. Yeah, I'm just calling down here, bro. I'm just calling down here and just like, unless it comes like, I don't fucking know, man, like the six of hearts and he pots the river, then I'll fold, I guess. But yeah, in this situation here, I'm never folding, man. Never, ever folding, no matter what he does here. If he bets pot in the river, man, I think I might fold. But again, Anathan, 75% in the low, mate, like top pair here is just going to be fucking printing. It's just going to be printing against this profile. Especially, especially when they min raise the flop. Uh, 10 8, I'll call here for one. And he does check back. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever. Like, this is a prime example of what I mean. Like, for, if we ever have ace queen in this line, we might end up value betting that river potentially. Because we maybe kind of feel like the out of position players is relatively capped in terms of hand strength. But, like, he raises the flop from min, bets the turn again, and doesn't even contemplate betting. Uh, ace queen here with the ace of spades so like it's, a, it's another example of why that would have been over bluffed if you actually bet the river because they're not betting these hands thin enough in, in, in this example this is a good one because this is like probably still a, uh, it's not the worst check back but I, I would probably still bet here if I was this if I if I, I'm trying to see it from their perspective if I somehow ended up in this line like he did with the raise small bet turn and then on the river here to side I might f bet here again with this hand, you know? But this is the thing. They just don't bet thin enough, or they don't even think about betting thin enough. That, that's really why I would have called that river again, mate. And if I'm wrong, it really doesn't matter. What happened to you with the tin is? Yeah, again, bro, it's like you, you're ahead of some of his range here, man. Like, not always or often, but, like, this line probably is going to be overbluffed when they bet small and then bet basically any size in for three quarters and below, I guess. Um, so, again, like that, mate, you're just going to... You're, you're turning hands that have probably a decent amount of showdown value here, like. Like, if he's betting 8-9 and you're raising 10-8 here, like, you, you know what I mean, man? Like, he will have some 8x here that, that, that you just don't need to raise this, man. You just don't need to raise this. Like, these are pretty big mistakes, bro. Like, they're just, like, spots where you just don't need to be investing or over-investing like you were. And we've saw that a couple of times. Um, Because now you don't know where the fucking hell you were on this river, bro. Like, there's 19 big, big blinds in the middle here, mate, and there should never be 19. Like, there should be what? Like, max 9, 10 big blinds. Realistically. Like, no more. And now he leads. I mean, we're folding here, by the way. Like, but again, just call the turn, mate, and call the river. Just that's that's all you need to do on that line. Like, just again, over invest in an extra, whatever, six or seven big blinds. And I don't want to be putting you down, man. I'm just being very, very honest. Like, it's just one of the, like, you, you you've over invested in a lot of spots, mate, that cost you two buy-ins in 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 a. You know, it's not even, we won't get through the 30 minutes, but like, you know, 22 minutes, you've, you've cost yourself one or two big blinds. Well, definitely one to one and a half um, in terms of over-investing, bro. So this Jack-5, again, I don't mind going for a small bet here. I don't mind checking, but if we check, we're never check folding on any turn or river versus any sizing, I would say. But betting here is absolutely fine. Betting here is absolutely fine, bro. We do get raised against this fish profile, mate. I mean, I don't even know if it is. 
I think B70 is the only one that's over bluffed on the river here in this line. It might be a little bit closer after you bet half pot. But we'll see what happens. It's probably going to be close in this river. But I don't think I fall versus three quarters, bro. I don't think I do. Versus bigger though I will. I mean, versus all in I am. Jesus Christ, it's the easiest fold of your career, bro. Easiest fold of your career. So we went check back on the flop here. I'd probably go for a high frequency bet here versus his profile, bro. But either way, delay C betting like this is going to be fine. You always have to bet the river against this profile now. Easy fall with the jack five, obviously. Yeah, I like this. I like this on the river. I like this. Well played with the king eight. Very, very well played. That profile, you should always be over bluffing against me, always. So, like, if you delay C bet there, you should always be betting river. If that's against a rake who might be a little bit over cally or know that you're over bluffing, then you can just check back the river. But I would always bluff against the rake in this, in this uh, run out. Always. Because, like, the easiest bluff characters there are, like, Queen X, which you won't always have, especially when you check calls, like, small or half pot delay C bet size. And... Uh, King 5 I'd open there as well, mate. King 5 I would open there as well. Alright, good 3 bet size with the 10s. Alright, we'll probably finish up on the next big hand, bro. I do my little outro, like I always do. So A7, you could 3-bet here on a low roll. I don't mind it. I think it is a low frequency 3-bet versus uh, 2x. I know Ace-8 and Ace-9 here are. I think Ace-8 is half the time. I could be wrong. I'd have to check, check, check them. But yeah, I like the 3-bet here. Alright, we'll finish up in this cast drop pot is what we'll do. Alright, we've got some Ace-7 of hearts, which is interesting. This is actually one thing I actually haven't a Scooby about, lads. Um, I honestly think this A7 of hearts can just be jammed here. Um, even now, I think more so. I think A7 in this situation is just going to be a pretty profitable shove in this situation, if I had to guess. I don't want to see a call, personally. Like, there is... 20 big blinds of dead money in the middle here, bro. That's 20% of your stack, and you've got A7 suited here. The only hand you really need to be a little bit concerned about is the guy in the hijack, but I like ripping here. Yeah, I, I like this a lot. Yeah, well played. Well played, this one. And we do get called. I really, really don't care that this guy called, because we should be ahead of his range a lot. A lot. Wow, very surprised to see that. Again, I do the same thing here, bro, with the A7, without a doubt. Without a doubt, mate. Without, without a doubt, I'm doing that with the A7. Nine of diamonds on the river. Negative, unfortunate. But yeah, I, I, I play it the exact same way, bro. I play it the exact same way. Right, we'll finish up with the Queen 10 and we'll leave it at that then. We'll leave it at that. But yeah, standard with the uh, A7, mate. I wouldn't worry about that too much. As I said, there's 20 dead black... 10, 20... Dead big blinds in the middle. Um, so yeah, no no reason to not try and just take that down pre. As I said, the only one I would have been semi-skeptical about was the guy in the hijack, and you did get him to phone. So well played, as I said. Alright, so that's gonna do it for this one, lads. Um, yeah, look, as I said, bro, it's one of those things where there's a lot of stuff going on. As I always say to guys that are doing these or getting these done, just like write feedback in the YouTube video below, and I will reply with any questions that you have. You can direct message me as well, mate. I don't mind either way. I'll leave that up to you. But yeah, a lot of a lot, there's a good few things to work on, mate. Overinvest in post flop is definitely a leak, a big leak, I would say. Like the A7 hand, I wouldn't mind. I do. I play it the exact same way. They're just ripping us like you did. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of post flop mistakes made, and probably some pre flop ones you need to work on. But as I said, just like write a review in the, in the comment section below and let me know what you think, anyways. So yeah, guys, appreciate anyone that met it this far. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. GG.